Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought it would be kind of fun to film this video. I was full blown in the middle of my eyeshadow palette collection video and I still fully intend on showing you guys more of my eyeshadow palette collection but after I filmed my untouched eyeshadow palettes I kind of got into decluttering some of them and so there's been a lot of changes in my eyeshadow palette collection as well as new palettes coming in so that is kind of on hold for a little bit I hope you guys will bear with me but today I was digging in my foundation drawer and I keep my foundations and my setting powders together and I was like Karen you have a lot of powders like you have a lot of powders in your collection like you should film a collection video so here we are filming a single like all my powders that are in individual compacts or um, jars I wanted to show you guys I thought it would be kind of interesting I feel like setting powders really blew up this year especially in the last couple of months it's been highlighters 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 but I felt like for the last couple of months every brand was coming out with some kind of powder some loose setting powder I also have some palettes, some face palettes that have setting powders in them. I'm not going to include those powders in this video, obviously, otherwise it would just get super muddled. So I'm just going to do single powders in my collection. So if you guys are curious, just keep watching. Okay guys, I do realize this is not going to be everybody's cup of tea and also I'm not a big powder person. I usually just use powder to set under my eyes. I recently started watching Mel Tom. Uh, is her name Mel Tom or Thompson? I don't know. Mel. And she uses like three different powders every time she does her makeup. She uses one to go under her eyes and then she like buffs and sets and she's got this whole technique down which I think is really cool and I hope to be a beauty guru as good as her someday. Her makeup is flawless. Anyway, let me start with some of the stuff I've had for a while. I think the first powder I ever bought individually is this guy. This is the RCMA No Color Powder. This blew up because of Kathleen Lights, our favorite YouTube beauty guru, of course. And this was super affordable. I remember it was impossible to get. Nobody could get their hands on this because it completely like sold out after she talked about it. And honestly, it looks like I've used it up, but it's because I put some in to a jar like this that I bought on Amazon. I don't know where the jar is, um, but basically I don't like this powder. I feel like it doesn't really do anything life-changing for me, and so it's just kind of always sat there. I keep meaning to declutter this. Like I just want to put it on my Poshmark, because um, there's still like a good amount, like this much in here, but I just never got around to it. Maybe I'll just give it to one of my friends, but yeah, that is probably one of the oldest powders in my collection. The other one that, this is a little bit more recent, is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Press Powder. This one I bought because, honestly, it was very affordable. It is a nice powder, especially for the drugstore. I mean, I think this is, like, under $5. It does have a wide shade range. I bought this, like, pale color. I use this for setting under my eyes. I like the compact. I like that it's affordable. It is a nice powder. Uh, but again, it doesn't get any use really in my collection anymore. For a while, everyone was talking about this and I picked this up in one of the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sales and I think these still go on the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. This is the Dermablend Loose Setting Powder. Who was talking about this for a long, long time? Was it Patrick Starr that was talking about Dermablend? I don't know. Somebody really big on YouTube was talking about it and I was like, well, of course I need it. Again, this is in the shade Cool Beige. It's a nice powder. Is it like the best powder I've ever had? I don't think so. I don't really use it that much. Dermablend is one of those brands that I want to try more things from but haven't ventured out too much. I believe they are available at Ulta. And then the other powder that I've had forever is this one by the brand Rodile. And it's a Instagram Compact Deluxe Banana Powder with a yellow tone highlighting powder. This I received when I went to Makeup by Mario's Masterclass in Chicago a few years ago. And I hadn't really heard much about this brand, but they are a sponsor of the Masterclass, which is why I ended up getting it. And I've seen them in a lot of his future Masterclass goodie bags as well. Um, I don't know. It's okay. Again, I just... <laughs> It's never been like a huge thing in my routine. I've definitely gotten into powders more in 2018. Like I said, because so many brands are coming out with them. But yeah, I think I think I may need to declutter that one as well. It just kind of sits in my collection and doesn't get enough love for me. 
The next one I picked up is the Velvetizer by Urban Decay. This one I basically bought because of how much Andrea Matiliano talks about this. She, I think, has actually panned these. And she just said, like, it's this amazing powder. It's actually supposed to be mixed in with your foundation. It's supposed to help, like, make your foundation more full coverage. I think that's the actual use for this. It's a translucent mix-in medium powder. I've never actually mixed it in, or did I try? I think I tried to mix it in one time with the foundation, but it's just so high maintenance for me to do that. So I really don't even have like a huge opinion on this because I feel like I haven't really tried it out too much, but let me know. Did you guys pick this up as well? And like, do you love it? Do you hate it? This is the cover effects. Perfect Press Powder in Medium. I think this had its moment on YouTube as well, which is probably why I picked it up, because again, I don't use a lot of powders. I bought this to basically set my under eye. There is a little bit of a dent in this, I'm not gonna lie. It is pretty prom promising that there's a dent in it, and it is in my Project Pan, which I literally haven't hit pan, I think, on anything that I put in that video. I keep meaning to film an update, but I'm also kind of like putting it off, because I'm like, I don't really have much to update people on, but anyway, yeah, so hopefully I can maybe at least hit pan on this at some point, um, but again, this isn't like a blows me away kind of product, so it's in my collection, but I don't love it, and then I also bought the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Powder in the shade Medium, and I actually put my date on here, so I bought this in May of 2017. So I've had it for a while, and I think this was like huge on YouTube for a while too. I want to say maybe Jaclyn Hill was talking about this, and that's maybe why I picked it up. And yeah, it's a good powder. Again, I feel like there's other powders I like more, so it hasn't gotten enough love in my collection. This powder I picked up because I think I saw somebody just like talk about how interesting it was in a review, and then I never really went back to it after I bought it. This is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. And this has a six month shelf life, so it's probably expired. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I saw somebody talk about this recently and they were putting it in like a recap and they said like how they felt like the powder had gone bad. The major selling point in this powder is as soon as you put it on your face, it felt like your face was wet. So people were like going nuts over it when it first launched. But then I saw somebody recently film like a follow up on it and said like, now that they've had it for a while, it felt like the air had gotten in and it didn't feel wet anymore on their face. So then I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, I should have returned this when I had the chance, but I didn't because I'm an idiot, so I kept it, and that's that. Here is another powder I picked up because, actually, this one I feel like I bought because of the packaging. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Setting Powder. I really still want to test this on camera, like, put it on and then, like, spray my face and see if it's actually waterproof. But I haven't really gotten around to it, and I mean, I know I've used this, but again, it's not anything like I'm like, oh my gosh, you need to run out and buy this right away. I have a hard time seeing what a powder does to my skin. I know it helps like set your under eye and stuff. That's what I use powder for a lot. I know people like buff it on and set their whole face with powder, but I do have dry skin, so I don't tend to do that all the time. So if you're watching this video and you have really oily skin and you're like looking to me to tell you which powder is gonna change your life, this is not that video. I'm just showing you guys my collection and giving you like very amateur reasons why I like some of these products. Now I'm gonna talk about my three favorites. These are the ones I actually like, I'm really happy with. So the first one is the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Magic Powder Under Eye and Face, and I really like this. It is so lightweight, and I don't know, it's just very easy to use, and I feel like it keeps my makeup in place for a long time, so I really like this. I can't remember how much this was, but I bought it on the Charlotte Tilbur Tilbury website, but Charlotte Tilbury is now sold at Sephora, so if you've been having your eye on this, definitely give it a whirl, and then I wasn't gonna buy this, but this is one of my latest purchases from the Sephora sale, so I have not actually used this ever. This is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder from Charlotte Tilbury, and this is in the shade number two medium. 
And this is what it looks like. I've seen so many YouTubers and people talking about how good this powder is. People say it just like makes your skin look flawless. And so I'm really, really excited to test this one out. I didn't want to buy it because I have this and I'm like, okay, you guys, you just saw all the powder I have. I feel like I didn't really need this, but I figured I would take advantage of the sale and pick that up to try it out. Next one, this is the one I'm actually wearing on my face today. This is the Huda Beauty shade Blondie and it's the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. This is really nice as well. I kind of like this because it feels really thick um, for me as far as like consistency goes and I really feel like it's a good heavy duty powder, especially for the under eyes. I like that she has a range of colors so you can pick something out depending on your skin tone which I think is really smart I know she got in hot water for copying beauty bakeries like baking concept but I feel like YouTube people need to like decide in the beauty community because I, this is controversial guys this is a controversial opinion it's an unpopular opinion so if you can't handle opinions don't watch this video but I feel like we're kind of all hypocrites because we say like, oh my gosh, Huda Beauty is the devil because she copied Beauty Bakery. Beauty Bakery is a small indie brand. Like, how dare they steal this concept? But we kind of live in that age where we've kind of done it to ourselves. There's so many brands that people support, like Makeup Revolution, that will like blatantly copy brands and everyone's okay with it as long as it serves their purpose. So that kind of annoys me. And I feel like Huda Beauty... A lot of people don't want to support the brand because of this like bake thing and there's been other reasons too but I also want to just point out that as a person with my skin tone I feel like she's one of the very few brands that cater to women with my skin tone like her foundations the range she has is awesome she her highlighting palettes her eyeshadow palettes I feel like are so person of color friendly so I feel like there's a lot of good and bad when it comes to brands and in my opinion I feel like I don't know I feel like it's silly to boycott a brand because it's like oh you stole that person's idea because even here on YouTube I feel like a lot of people have similar ideas similar videos it doesn't mean that it was stolen it just means that a lot of people have the same ideas like it's not that unheard of you know so yeah, I don't know. That part, I was just like, I was getting so, like, annoyed because everyone was just like, oh, I can't support Huda Beauty because they ripped off Beauty Bakery. Well, Beauty Bakery is a great indie brand, but I still like Huda Beauty's products. <laughs> I do. I do. Don't hate me for saying that. I just, I'm so happy that she's one of the brands that actually, like, you know, supports women with my skin tone. So I really, I'm okay with supporting her brand. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. Last powder. Oh my gosh, this is the best. I saved the best for last. This is my Hourglass Whale Translucent Setting Powder. And I think this just comes in the one shade. But I love this powder so, so much. It is amazing. I seriously think I need to just declutter all the other powders. I just to show you guys and keep just like this Charlotte Tilbury, the Huda, and this one. Because this one's really nice too. I really enjoy it. It is so finely milled. And it just like sets my face. I actually use this one and set my whole face because again, it's very lightweight. So even though I have dry skin, I don't feel like it like sucks my skin dry. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I don't actually have any Laura Mercier powders. I bought one of her powders during one of the VIB sales and I was really disappointed because I used it under my eyes and it felt so drying. And I could like very vividly remember how my under eyes felt when I put that powder on. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like way too drying for my skin. So I returned it with a swiftness. So a lot of these, like the main ones I showed you guys work for me. I don't have terribly dry skin, but I live in a very cold climate. So I have to be very careful about where I put powder. So I only try to use it to like set my under eyes. Yeah, I just think there's so many cool techniques that people use with powder. I really want to get better at that. But I hope you guys enjoy my powder collection, my setting powder collection. I know it's pretty fabulous and this is like the most entertaining video you ever saw. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Let me know your favorite powder because I am so curious to see if there's anything else I should be trying out or keeping my eyes out for. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.